the uh, next subject for the TikTok live, last TikTok subject for today. But we got to have a chance in that same conversation. Uh, this whole, like most of this talk today, right, has been just recapping a, a conversation. Uh, we talked about TikTok lives because like most people don't quite understand that TikTok lives are going to place that these other platforms haven't taken it yet. Yeah. The, the the beauty of it is beautiful, right? <laughs> For like a better words, like the biggest thing that I, I noticed, right, that just let me say, oh, I need to pay attention to this was when I started to take note, because I had been doing it out of habit, but one day it clicked. It's like, yo, they're showing somebody's live stream that I'm not following, Yeah. all right? Instagram, you gotta follow that person to see their live stream. Just like a regular video pops up on my For You page, somebody's live stream is popping up on my For You page. I click that thing, I'm in there live. That's a discovery mechanism. Yeah. Where before, it's only a way to, you know, interact with people who are already following you. So that alone lets you know, oh no, this is gonna hit different, right? That was what I was seeing early on, but now things have, like we'll play a clip, but they've graduated to a point where You'll see people making dumb money doing interesting things. I've seen a lot of crazy things. But remember, I sent you this clip with this rapper right here. I'll play it. Man, we'll play it on the live. They really love it, I'm thumping, I gotta keep with it like this out of coffee. I cannot stop it, she calling like that's out of matter. You know that I really keep popping. Everybody wanna talk. Alright, so about the it. whole point of of this and why I think this is like important to share and show, right? It's just these numbers that Buddy's getting. Yeah. He's just straight up freestyling, right? If you got that type of Billy, especially, you know, we know freestyle is always trying to figure out how to make money. This is the new I'm rapping on the street. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He's yeah. just rapping Facts. on the live. Facts. And dude has 903,000 likes just as I'm watching it. I, I recorded it because I thought it was dope what I was going on. Look at all the hearts he's getting. Got he's 1,500 getting, people in there. 1,500 people in there. You know what I mean? I never heard of this guy before, but this is just off of a live. And it, he probably does these a lot. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. trains people to like come in and to continue to discover him through that. But look at all these, uh, these, these gifts, right? R remember the guy? Uh, do you remember who that was? The That's artist it. who was like, "Yo, like getting a rose is five cents, which is more than a stream." Who yeah, was it was uh, Nathan Fox. That was Nathan. Yeah, it was Nathan. Nathan. It's a like shout out to you, Nathan. Right, yeah. um, <laughs> but like that right there is a crazy thing to think about. So like, if you stay on live and you hustle, like I know a lot of DJs that'll be on live. I watch them. Yeah. So it's like you're getting tips, and this money is adding up. This money is adding up versus getting the stream. But and not only that, you're able to get sh discovered by a new audience. Those two alone, the money you're making, I know it's still not like a, a stupid amount just to say five cents per rose, but there's also bigger, you know, stickers yes, and yeah. gifts than, that, that you can get than that. But that's just a baseline. Literally, one of those is more than a stream. How, yeah. many streams do you, how many streams do you need to get five cents? Like 10? 10, 11? 10 streams yeah. to get to five cents, bro. All right? One rose, you get that. Yeah. So that's if you think about it in that in that different paradigm, and that's one of the big things about like escaping the way the music industry is trying to get you to think about music and consumption, yeah. you start to be able to take advantage of different moments, right? That's what a lot of artists like Russ do. Uh, Russell's now doing that, right? A lot of those artists that are even if they're taking advantage of some of the main music industry stuff, they're also on the, uh, the new shit. Yeah, they're doing oh, diving into the, the new stuff pretty much. Not even just the new though. It's just like the just the brink, the like the the edge where they're dealing with the world outside the industry, new or old, of how they are willing to get their fans or look at their fan base and consumption. Yeah. The whole relationship where the industry, a lot of times, they sell us on how we should look at ourselves, right? If you're an, if I'm an artist, right? Yeah. They sell us on how we should judge success when most of how they judge success is based off of them as a corporation, numbers that they have to hit. First week numbers only matter if you're really at a label like that, right? Yeah. All right, okay, if you happen to be number one, that's something that you can market and, and flex and show, right? But then again, oftentimes leverage for a label deal. But if like, so if you're at a label, it looks 
a lot better to have, I don't know, I'm just going to say 10 million, that's a low number for a label. Let's just say 100 million streams in the first week. I'm just throwing that number out there versus having a hundred million streams over two years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Or even matter of fact, it's more valuable to for them to see a hundred million streams over the first week than it is for them to see 300 million streams over three years, two years. All right. Because there's so many incentives when it comes to like just corporate, right. It's just, a you gotta, so one thing that we forget about, is this is a regular ass job, bro, yeah. for people. Yeah. It's a regular ass court. People get bonuses off of what how music performs yeah, at a label. Taxes. They get taxes. <laughs> they get promotions. Oh, this yeah. artist did well and you did well in your job, right? They get fired. Yeah. It's a regular job for people on that side of things. So when you look at it and understand it that way, but you're not in that system, none of that stuff applies to you. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't mean that that can't be valuable or cool. Right, getting your Grammy doesn't mean much in terms of a fan base, but also you can flip that from a brand standpoint and get corporations to pay you more. Yeah. Right. So there's value to it, but don't assign it where it doesn't belong. And like Friday, I was, I, bro, I was just about to say that. Who bro. mentioned it? I, I'll let you say it then. Like, I, I, it's funny. I saw somebody else mention that recently, but we've talked about that before. Oh, wait, that's never mind. I feel like he was about to say something else when I was about to say. Oh, okay, okay. Well, look, <laughs> I was going to just say like everybody dropping their music on Friday. Okay, actually, no, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. okay. See, we're that's what I thought. Yeah, I, was like, okay, well, I know, yeah. I ain't know where else he could go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's exactly like that, right? Where it's like the the Friday release only matters if you're trying to hit Billboard. I actually just had this conversation with the artist today. It's crazy, but I was like, yo, I was like, do you feel like? you right now has a real chance of hitting billboard and they were like no i was like okay so why does it matter if you put your music out on friday now granted i also get you know people wanting to get the the like playlist relationships right most playlists update on friday but i mean but um sam when he did the curtis waters single release through through his label they dropped that on a tuesday and I remember he was freaking out. He was like, man, we're not going to know if we get the DSP support until Friday because we mm. chose not to drop on a Friday. Friday rolled around. They on New Music Friday. They on all these different places. Everything's good again, bro. Like, the, the ship is back. The ship is back moving like it should be. CMI. Yeah, so it's just like, it's like, man, there's so many of these, like, traditional music industry, I guess, models or methods that do not apply to, like, 99% of music artists. And it's like, I feel like, like you said, bro, the game has no rules when you're beneath the industry. Like, it's just like, get in how you can get in, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Be as creative as you can be, you Facts. know what I'm saying? Break through however you gotta break. Nobody, people only talk shit about you while you're trying to break through. As soon as you break through, it's like, oh, that dude was genius, bro. That, that was a crazy ass idea he came up with. <laughs> like, that shit was, that shit was fine. Exactly. So it's like, I don't get artists who force themselves to play by the rules of a game that they're not a part of yet. It's like, bro, and don't, that you're gonna lose. Yeah, and that you're gonna lose that. Yeah, it's like you're not even supposed to be over there, and you trying to. <laughs> it's like your little brother trying to like hoot with you and your friends, bro. It's like, bro, you're not ready yet, bro. Right. Like one day you're gonna grow, you're gonna be big and strong, right? You, you can post up with us, but until exactly. then, bro, go back over there. Right and, there, that that word right there, the post up. Yeah, you are there crying because you're getting the post yeah. up, and I'm using my strength. It's like, bro, it don't matter. You got better handles and all that stuff. I'm using my strength. Yeah, I'm bro. winning. It is what it is. You ain't supposed to be over here. Yeah, it's like, bro, you seven, bro. Of course I'm going to violate you physically. You know what I'm saying? Like, we about to win this game by any means necessary. It's like, bro, go back over there. Hoop and dominate who you can dominate. And then you're going to get stronger. You're going to get bigger and get better. Then come back over here and play the game with us, bro. I, I look at music the same way. It's like yep. every, that people want to jump into a game playing by rules that don't apply to them. And then when they lose, everybody's looking at them and like, you know you didn't have to do that, right? Like, you didn't have to do it that way. There's... So many other ways you could have went about this thing. And so to me, that's where the TikTok Live thing becomes interesting because it's still too new to really say, I guess, what kind of impact it's going to have on ours. But I really do feel like we're starting to see this weird renaissance where I think people would rather be an influencer than a music artist. I don't think it's fully there mm. yet, but I think we're getting there because it's like, but now – information about music is coming out and we're learning about how much these artists don't get paid, right? Or how right. much they're really not getting paid. Right. Reports are coming up about influencers and we're learning how much a lot of them make, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, bro, you making that from YouTube? You making that from TikTok? And so to see it in real time is different. I had a live once where there was a guy who was taking donations to sing songs, like whatever songs somebody wanted him to sing. He could like, you donate, whatever you want to donate to me and I'll sing it. Man, I watched him make like three, four thousand dollars in like an hour and a half. 
That dude, I haven't seen him on my timeline in a while, but there was a point where like he was going live like four or five times a week. If I if I'm assuming low end five hundred dollars high, let's say that was the highest he ever got at three at three four thousand dollars. It's like man, he's still making like seven to ten thousand dollars a week if he's doing that consistently. Yeah, I don't know any independent artist that would turn that down, and I don't know any who have figured out a system yet to make it that quickly and for that that little amount of work. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so it's like. I think as more of those people start to come out, and of course as TikTok kind of like evolves the whole platform and the way they kind of run it, hopefully a lot more of the RSC and go like, like you said, bro, it's like, damn, I could come over here, hang out on this TikTok live for an hour, make six, $700, which isn't nothing, but it's like, if you would did the same amount of work, put 600 people to your music, you know what I'm saying? Like you would've made like 40 cents. So it's like, oh, you could do both. You could do it, make the donation money, have those people funnel over to your music. You make that money, and then you use all of it to kind of like keep keep the shit going. Exactly. And it, what's crazy about it is, it is, I was having this conversation with another artist too. But I was like, what's interesting about it is that Gen Z and younger, like they're they're fully ingrained in like donation culture because a lot of them grew up in Twitch, right? Yeah, Twitch, yeah. I would argue, was the first oh, yeah. platform that started getting people used to like, yo, you like this credit? Yo, give him some money, because we ain't about to pay him. So in the don't... US, at least, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yo, bro, you on, you on... oh yeah, because tic... they had the, what, what's Chinese TikTok? They were doing it pretty heavy, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've been doing that across Long. a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. the WhatsApp, like, you know, text apps, they've always been doing stickers and, yeah, and yeah. all that type of stuff, yeah. Yeah, so, but it's like a lot of these, like, new age kids, bro, like, they grew up with their, their favorite Twitch streamer being like, yo, donate money in, in the chat, bro. YouTube has been doing the whole super subscriber thing for like years mm-hmm. at this point. And so it's like, there's a period where that was all weird. Now we're moving to the period where like, that's normal. Like yep. fans go into these different platforms thinking like, man, I got, I got $5 on me, bro. If I like what I see, I'll throw you a couple, I'll throw you a couple of <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And that shit adds up to yeah. where it's like, bro, you got, you know, you got a hundred fans throwing you a penny you know, says whatever, but you got ten thousand fans on your opinion. And they're doing it consistently every day, bro. Like that shit, that shit start to stack up. So I don't know, man. I think like the lives are looking like a pretty viable like monetization model for like any artist who can figure out the gamification element of it, because that's the big thing I've been seeing with it. Like the, even the guy Clippy shows, like you can just go live and like regular talk. You might make a little bit of money if you got like if you have the audience for it already. If you are new, going back to like you said, the whole discoverability aspect of it, like we're more than likely. I had a TikTok live one time, bro. Where I, it was like 40 people in there, and I know where it shot up to like 1,600 people in it. Oh, yeah. I remember you saying Yeah, that. bro. So it's yeah, like, I know where 1,570 people were in there that not, did not know who I was. <laughs> did not know who I am, bro. You know what I'm saying? It just came out of nowhere. But it's like, if you figure out something that you can do that's not just entertaining to your audience, but also entertaining to random people, and you can gamify it, right? You can have a tiered system in it or some type of competition in it or, or whatever, bro. You can make a lot of money off these TikTok lives. Yeah, well, and this is just in the beginning of it. Because remember, you know, I remember you told me that Aussie was doing tarot cards. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people now doing like tarot cards or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's a whole space, right? So get those, you know, do the readings. That artist that we first started talking about in this conversation, Free he's styles. freestyling. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen literally people like, throwing ping pong balls into cups not beer pong though like doing like random complicated devices and that's the whole thing and you're just watching until they make it and i stay on way longer than i i should you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. like it's all kind of random different things matter of fact i literally i could record it like me going through a whole bunch of lives just because i wanted like to show how random it is yeah. right i'm gonna like put it up somewhere whatever like but it's, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere man like tiktok goes everywhere and it's funny you talked about the amount of money, especially these YouTubers make, man. Crazy. The um, I was, you know, the lead attorney. Mm-mm. Oh man, he's actually in Atlanta, I believe. Um, but he's like a divorce attorney, right? And um, well, I don't know if he's still practicing, but he's like forties or whatever. And <laughs> one, he was like, "Yo, if you're over." Like if he's like if you're 25, you're making forty five thousand dollars a year. Cool. If you you know 30, 30 33, all right, you know, cool. Well, he's like, but if you over your forty, he's basically like quit and become a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically where he was coming from. And he said he started. He wasn't making that little money, but he was. Uh, he started at forty three, mm. doing YouTube. Forty five now, and he's making fifty k a month. 50k a month? Yeah. Crazy. And he was like, this conversation was actually about like Cardi B's trial, right? And Tasha K. 
uh, unwind with Tasha K. I yeah. mean, if I get her the whole name and she owes that forty million, four four million, and he was like at the case and stuff. All right, so he would like he was talking about some of the things going on in the courtroom and everything, but yeah, he was saying that like, do y'all? He asked like the chat, do y'all think Tasha K has this money? And a lot of people were like, nah, 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 nah. And a couple people said yes. And he was like, it's funny that the only people I see saying yes, that she got the money, are YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when he started breaking down. He was like, yo, man. It was like, I, I think he was making, I mean, he just walked down from when he was making 10K to, to, uh, to uh, what, 15K a month to 20K a month and now doing 50K. And he's like, she got over a million followers. I only got think he has like 150 200k followers yeah you know and he's like hey just imagine what she's making doing the numbers that she does especially even you add in going lives yeah and these people who go live full circle bro because yeah. he i was watching his it was a recording of his live stream but if you look at him like kevin samuels all right his whole thing was just going live you yeah. hear a whole lot of people like man matter of fact we were uh when we were at the event in la it was like the whole, oh, yeah, the they, four yeah. YouTubers who were like doing stupid numbers. It was like, what, three uh, white guys and uh, Vanessa. They were, one of the guys was like, I don't know how Kevin like just does those lives. Well, yeah. you know, you know, RIP, but like just goes lives, keeps the attention, everybody's trained, and then Every you're day. done. Yeah. You do your live show, doing hundreds of thousands, even millions of, of, uh, of views off of it. And getting super chat money, then you get to be the ad dollars when that thing plays. Yeah. So like the amount of money they making, and just from going live, man, yeah. and doing that in the right way, that junk is crazy. Yeah, it's like people, people it's just like uh, itching to give that money to somebody. Somebody, hey, yeah, my, hey, might as well be you, bro. Like, hey, might as well. Hey, for real, it's out there. So yeah, I appreciate yo actually, because I'm going uh, to Vegas for Thanksgiving. Okay. To see my, uh, you know, my, my my uncle and aunt or whatever. Okay. And this is a perfect conversation because the live streams, right? And you talked about the culture that exists now that didn't exist, especially in America, of donating money, right? Yeah. Especially the people online through those chats, Twitch, now TikTok, Super Chat on, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, bless their heart. They still trying, right? <laughs> yeah. The beauty about this is somebody is going to, everybody's going to come up out their money. Might as well be me. Right. Yeah. And this is the Vegas setup. Right. Because if you watch all these lives. Right. And you see all these people donating. You might you might not make that donation that time to that person. Yeah. But you go to the next live and eventually you've seen it done enough, you're more likely to donate. Yeah. And that's how Vegas is set up, bro. Like, the first time I went, and I was like, bro, it's casinos everywhere. Like, it's slots everywhere in the gas station, in the airport. And, I mean, it's vices everywhere. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. What, what you want to smoke, what you want to drink, who you want to smash, it's all there. And somebody's going to get your money. Yeah. You think that you're going to be strong, but even you being strong is way weaker than you usually are in a different environment. <laughs> yeah. Because the yeah. whole environment is set up to take your money. Yeah. It's the strip club as a city, right? Yeah. And now, you know, TikTok yeah. Live, these live streams across these platforms, that's the strip club on your phone. Damn. Crazy, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's a, <laughs> that's a crazy way to look at it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, that's gonna be a lot of money made on these lives, bro. <laughs> now, I'm already saying it, bro. Like I, yeah. I believe. Like I'm telling everybody, I know. Like yo, just at least try. It's what you gotta lose, bro. Best case scenario, you make some money. Worst case scenario, you know, you weren't doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, bro, that's <laughs> the best part. Part about the uh, content. I remember actually uh, when um, Buddy mentioned I'm making fifty k a month. Of course, he probably, you know, you pay for your house, whatever. But, like, generally speaking, your overhead is so fucking low. Yeah. You're just posting videos on YouTube, making that much money, let alone the other numbers we've seen on YouTube. Yeah. But you're making that. So, imagine, yeah, you are making 50K a year on on YouTube, just posting, not having to travel to work, or not having to deal with a boss that you don't want to, right? not having to deal with all these other circumstances even that even goes back why would i want to deal with all this other stuff in terms of monetizing music in this entire game when i could literally just sit in my room talk about some shit that i'm interested in and people follow me and i make money that way versus yeah. play the artist game yeah like that's harder 
Yeah. Like, wait on it. <laughs> like, why? Wait on it. You know what I'm saying? Why would I do that? So, yeah, man. These lives, man. These lives. I think I'm a little. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna extrapolate these clips, put them out into the hemisphere, but I think we need to have more conversations and, like, pull out. We, we should find some dope people, bro. If y'all know some dope people, y'all seen some great lives. Oh, bro, I already got like six on my, on my phone, bro. We, I been, every time it. I come across one, I think it's five, I'm, I'm recording it. Hey, we need, yeah, Record we need it. to, we're going to share it out content. <laughs> Maybe we start doing some talks with people. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's going to have their own flow and formula because it's just all a show. But, man, it's like there goes the cycles again, right? You got live TV, right, mm-hmm. has taken a toll except for sports. Because sports, obviously, you know, it's, it's just best to experience it live. You yeah. know, like, all right. You don't want to hear about it. Yeah, later. they already won. And yeah. it was like, I don't want to. I already know what happens. It just ruins it, right? <laughs> so they're they're doing well. But now, live streams are coming back. So that's that same thing. It's still that cycle, bro. You, yeah. People never escape the cycles. Yeah, but they just reformat it for whatever people want to be on. It's all it is. That, that point in time. Same shit, different platform. But I wouldn't be surprised if they start having interstitial ads on live streams it's probably gonna get there i think i I don't actually no never mind i can't say that yet i I just i think it's getting there because tiktok has a whole thing where you can market your lives now but that's pushing it out to other people so right right, yeah but i think they are gonna get there because tiktok doesn't have a space where the live can live for them to make ad revenue off of it right and eventually they're gonna want some ad revenue off that shit or they're taking a crazy percentage of the donations which might be making up for the the fact they're not making our revenue, but I think yeah, at some point I definitely think so. But especially if it's a long ass live, bro, I'm throwing right. I'm, I'm throwing a thirty second ad exactly. In there. <laughs> and make it clear to people what we talking about. So if y'all listen to podcasts, right? If you go back to listen to, I don't know, somebody's podcast from earlier this year, they have the ability to have new ads in that old podcast, right? So I was listening to a podcast from July of this podcast that I listened to. But he's all, they're all talking about this water that they're advertising. It's like some water you can get at public, some mineral water or sparkling water. And it's like, dang, this is the exact same ad. But I know they weren't doing this back then because yeah. I remember listening back then because it can update. So if you think about the company, I got a podcast company. I got a um, or just a catalog of content for me to constantly monetize with new adver- advertisers all the way to my back catalog without having to edit the video, right? Like, and and do the ad live. That's extremely valuable. You add that to live streams, bam, same thing. Yeah. But what if there was a way that you could do that during a live stream? I feel like somebody's gonna try to figure that out too. Yeah, I think it's gonna get there. It's it's it's, it's natural because it's commercials. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm Again, saying, but there's no way I'm about shit. to let this. Creators sit on my platform for hours making all this money, <laughs> and I'm not throwing that. It's it's gonna get there, bro. I think TikTok's whole model is like making it look super creator friendly in the beginning, and they come behind and be like, "All right, y'all love it." Now go they go a little bag for hey, it. You know, TikTok, <laughs> not TikTok, Instagram did the same thing with um IGTV. Like you get ads on your like videos over whatever the, the the length is, right? Uh-huh. You get ads on that shit. Like, I go back and look yeah. at my videos sometimes. Like, oh, you made you know eighty cents from ads on this video. I'm like, damn, I get ads on my video. That's crazy, right? So. I think the fact that TikTok, they're either going to have to A, make a space for the lives to live so they can run ads on it, or they're going to start running ads on the lives while they're in, in, in right. action. I think it's going to be that That's one. That's the pimp shit right yeah, there, bro. bro. Crazy. You, you on the pimp talk, man. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, you ain't about to sit on my platform. Making money? I ain't taking a piece? <laughs> I ain't Come on, bro. no piece. Come on, now. Well, go ahead and give me that piece and Band. go on back out there. <laughs> <Band>. <laughs> Throw that thing, sing a song, do whatever you got to do. But they already <laughs> violated them on the uh, donation percentage, too. I think TikTok take like 50 or something. 30, stupid. 50 percent, something it's, it's crazy. Big, yeah. So maybe big, not big. then. They already violated them enough. Yeah. I mean, enough? What is enough? <laughs> <laughs> what is enough? <laughs> they violated, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like, bro, if I, they got to be crazy, bro. Like, looking at your analytics and saying, like, damn, this credit made 100K last night. I mean, we made at least 50K. I'm going to go check them donation tickets real quick to make sure that shit. <laughs> And make sure that shit paid out. Oh, oh no, nah, he 20K short. Hey, block him. <laughs> Sean will not play that shit over here. It takes off. <laughs> oh, he had the cash app in the bio? Block him. We don't oh, play that shit over here. Hey, bro, for real. <laughs> That's exactly what they be doing, man. But, like, legit. But they're a lot. I think they're a lot 
more lenient on it now. I had a lot of ones, but I got kicked off for just saying the word cash out. That shit was crazy, bro. That shit happened. <laughs> Somebody was like, yo, what's your, in the comments was like, yo, what's your cash out? And I was like, what's my cash out? And it just ended immediately. And I was like, oh, they really don't play that shit. I ain't never, I haven't said the C word on TikTok a lot since. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, TikTok, TikTok be having people like they in prison or something, bro, on their lives. They're like, oh, nope, I won't say it. I'm, I'm going to write it on the wall. Nah, that's my shirt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over the rhymes with Ash app or something like bro. Yeah, that shit is funny, bro. It's like it, TikTok, <laughs> like, they, they really have a stronghold of the game, and I don't really see it changing for a very long time. Um, but, you know, look, it is what it is. The, the I think the benefits outweigh the cons from an individual yeah. level. Yeah, 100%. The macro, okay, look, they, there might be a little bit of uh, strong arming going on, but as a way to get up and the amount of visibility they give you, just look at it that way. Like, yeah. hey, you don't have to pay for the marketing out of pocket, so you're getting like a little, you know, a loan yeah. that you never have to touch your money for. Yeah, it's like we bring you the money. Yeah, we bring yeah. you the money. We yeah. just we just want a little commission. Like, That's all that it's is. Like, like a sales rope, bro. We're yeah. gonna we gonna bring you the leads, man. If you yeah. get them to spend some money, we gonna we gonna all cut that, bro. But we brought them to you. You know what I'm saying? That's hey, that's all it they, is. They taking the YouTube route, bro. I was saying that like where YouTube, you know, anytime a YouTuber comes out has that criticism with YouTube, they never respond back. They're like. Nigga, where else you gonna go? Yeah. Like, what other platform gonna, on. gonna cash you out a hundred bands? Where you going? Yeah. Instagram? Yeah, exactly. You, you gonna, gonna go to Instagram? Yeah, like, come on, bro. <laughs> and I feel like TikTok is starting to like get to that level of uh, cockiness. They cockiness. They, they, they in their yeah. bag. Yeah. They they feeling yeah. themselves. I'm like, bro, where else you gonna go, bro? Hey, man, we just pushed three hundred thousand people to your video in twenty minutes. Bro, where else you going? Who gonna oh, do yeah. you like that? You like that? Man. You're right. <laughs> My bad, y'all. Oh man. <laughs> no more cash ups. <laughs>